Welcome everyone to my take on All Quiet on the Western Front, a German film about the horrors of war, an adaptation of the book of the same name and winner of four Oscar awards this year. Before we begin, let me state that I vastly prefer playing games to watching movies, so don't expect a lot of these movie review videos, and also don't expect me to go all philosophical in one either, because I really just want to enjoy a movie, not think meticulously about what the artist's semi-hidden message was. Of course, if the message is grand and clear enough, everyone will take notice of it, and that is very much the case in this movie as well. I've watched a few reviews as well as read some articles about the movie before writing this script, in which I found out some new information I hadn't known before. And also this is gonna be a more serious video than usual, mostly because of the serious subject matter depicted in the film. So without further ado, let's begin. The story of All Quiet on the Western Front begins in 1917, the third year of the First World War in Germany. Paul Baumer, Baumer, I hope I'm not butchering that too much, and a group of his friends enthusiastically enlist in the German army to fight against France in, you know, the Western Front. After they've been basically brainwashed into being proud German soldiers who shall die for the country. They are issued uniforms and rifles and whatnot, but what they don't know is that they aren't special heroes or anything. Their uniforms are just stitched up versions of the same clothes previously worn by someone else who wasn't as lucky out there. Almost immediately as they are sent on the battlefield, they realize that war is dirty, full of fear, and that you often rely on chance rather than skill to survive. Or I suppose the skill of the opposing gunman aiming at you. They get disillusioned about the non-existent glory of war pretty quickly, legitimately fearing for their lives as tanks roll across the trenches. Remember, tanks were a new invention back then, they were just starting to get used in wars from 1916. Even one of Paul's friends, Ludwig, is killed on their first night by artillery fire. The rest of the movie spends the last five days of the war, that is, from November 17th to the 11th of 1918. There's a scene where Paul is out there with his regiment on the no man's land trying to take it, where he stabs a French soldier in a crater that was made by a grenade. The process of the man dying was really bad and painful to see through for me, but that just signifies how war is full of these situations. Paul does try to save him though, because he regained his sense of compassion, from the realization that war is not as heroic as he imagined. He's remorseful about what he's done, but really if he had done nothing, he would have been the one to get stabbed. So there is no good ending in situations like these. This scene really has a powerful effect on the viewer about the reality of war, and I hope it can dissuade people from fighting in one. The book the film is based on is often said to be the most realistic interpretation of war in writing. Sometimes the boys' story gets interrupted by a German delegation headed by Matthias Erzberger, having increasingly uncomfortable and very awkward meetings with the French high command, among them Ferdinand Foch and Maxime Weygand. The Germans, who were the aggressors in the war, now plead for an armistice to not waste more lives for nothing. The French only offer a non-negotiable armistice settlement, which the Germans have three days to sign or refuse. When Matthias tells them that they don't have three days to waste more lives, Foch just tells them to sign it then and there. Just watch it, I couldn't describe it better than how it actually is.
these scenes were my favorite scenes in the entire movie because they were so tense and you could sense that even though the Germans were the aggressors, at least some of them finally came to their senses and wanted to end the war, to which the French only forced conditions on them. Don't get me wrong, the French had an absolute right to be mad and not want to negotiate with people who invaded their country. The movie also depicts the soldier's sexual deprivation, with no women on the front lines, one of the group, Krop, when he sees a woman on a poster, he pretty much hallucinates a woman there and asks her out, and he cuts her out of the poster and brings it back to flex on the others. On another occasion, some random French peasant women just happen to be near the regiment's camp, so Franz takes the opportunity and goes with them to have sex, and brings back one of the women's scarf as a souvenir. All of this happens while people from up high just watch from their fancy houses saying war is my order and such bullshit while thinking nothing about what it's actually like for the soldiers giving their lives, meaning that people up there don't give a fuck about those who fight their wars because they all are replaceable in their eyes and as long as there are people for them to be replaced with Nothing matters about them. At about 5 a.m. on November 11th, 1918, the German delegation meets with the French again, where they sign the armistice, which is to take effect six hours later at 11 a.m., the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. I don't get why, though. Why not a few minutes from then? Why waste more lives by continuing the war for six more hours than necessary when they signed the damn armistice already? Anyway, Paul and Kat, an illiterate soldier the group befriended, who are the only people left alive from the group, steal some food from a farmer, again, and a bit later Kat gets shot by a fucking child the child of the former, that is, but still a child shoots him. The German commander refuses to accept the already accepted armistice and orders an assault at 10.45 a.m. Pretty much everyone is fed up with the war already and wants to go home, however, before the situation could turn into a riot, the people who especially refuse to fight any longer are just fucking shot, right then and there. Paul gives his all in those final 15 minutes of the war. You know that slightly empowering feeling you get when you have to do something, you don't want to, but for just a little longer and then you can stop and you're just like, fuck it, let's get it over with. Yeah, Paul is operating with this mindset now. He kills a good few people, however, just a few seconds before 11 a.m., he gets stabbed in the heart and dies about a minute later. Across the whole of the movie, it seems the guys are going more and more mentally insane by the hour. That just shows that if you're not dead, after a war you will be mentally scarred for the rest of your life. So you don't get out of a war without something to sharply remind you about it. This movie looks amazing even when Paul looks disgusting. I remembered those scenes the most, the ones that Paul looks disgusting while trying to survive in. Such as when he kills that French guy in the crater, or in the end when he gets almost drowned in the mud-filled water in the enemy trenches. So this movie looks great at all times and of course with the color palette of a dark and muddy war. I don't really pay attention to movie music because they're usually unnoticeable and hide well in the background. There are of course exceptions, such as John Wick 4 or the Super Mario Bros movie, but All Quiet on the Western Front doesn't have much memorable music. However, I loved these sounds that either indicated that something else is gonna happen now, 
or that some really fucked up stuff is coming. In conclusion, All Quiet on the Western Front is a great movie to portray what war is actually like. Not that I have ever fought in a war, it just seems like the mind scoring experience I imagine most people have in one. This movie tries and succeeds in conveying that war is not about glory, it's not about defending the homeland, it's about fear, death and, I hate to say this, politics. Maybe your regiment's commander actually cares about your life, but go up a few ranks and you're just a random person to die sooner or later and be replaced by another random guy. So if all quiet on the western front can't dissuade someone from war and showing that they will be more mentally scarred than full of glorious memories, I don't know what can. That being said, it's time for the score, and All Quiet on the Western Front gets a very solid 92 out of 100. The music and character development could have been a bit better in my opinion, but it's still a damn good movie. Truly a work of art where the art looks disgusting for a good cause. Check out All Quiet on the Western Front on Netflix. Let me know how you liked or disliked this more serious video in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye everyone!